now we are going to look at that channel. Um, even though this edge here is incredibly sharp, you won't be able to see that edge when we're done because of the static roof, the static entity roof. We'd go in and touch up bits that do poke through and can be seen, but we don't have to spend time now making that straight because it won't be an issue when the cave is finished. Oh, is there a bit of water? Ah, we don't want that though. So smooth that out a bit. Bring that brush down and just smooth it down. This is because there's a sharp um, uh, a dip in the terrain here. So we add a bit of material like that. We can then smooth it out easier. Also, your smooth brush works better over a wider area because it has more of the terrain to get data from. So that smooth will be a lot more effective than that smooth. Um, so there we go. That's nicer. Okay. Now we're going to look at this channel here because it, is, it needs work before I can carry on. I can't just let it be. So if I start smoothing down the base, um, now I'm going to lose my channel briefly, but I'm going to put it back when I'm finished. I just want to sort out the floor. Um, It's an iterative process. Um, you have to just do little bits, little bits, little bits, and little bits check, little bit check, little bit check. Plus, there was a, a jig here from when I used the level brush to cut through the mountain. It created a very displaced um, terrain. So I want to smooth that out so it doesn't cause any problems, and then I can re-dig the cleft, um, but smoother. Um, hmm, okay, so yeah, we need to dig a bit more out here. So if I take the level brush again and go, looks like I did last time. Ah, thing to note here, you must be careful using a brush like this in this viewport because if I carried on going like this, eventually I'd hit the inside of the cave and destroy it. Um, this is the best mode to use this kind of brush but it doesn't give you the sort of player eye perspective that this does. So by all means use both views, but be careful you don't accidentally chew a hole through your landscape. Um, it's very real and very possible. There we go. Now that's wider than I'd like it to be. So, but the process of smoothing it all out will reduce the size of it. So. Um, I will also be padding the edges with um, more static entities throughout this process. So the finished um, inlet will be a lot smaller than it is right now. So I just want to get rid of those horrible stretched and sharp seam textures. The top as well. Um, you have to smooth from both edges. Otherwise it will still be stretched. Ah! I'm in the trees. Right, we go. So as you can see, by smoothing the top, you are unstretching the bottom. There we go. And just keep on smoothing. Keep on smoothing. Um, until you get rid of all the edges and get rid of all the texture stretches and it looks nice. Now, I know um, it doesn't have to be super deep it's just where the water's eroded um, but I want it enough that your character will make a splash as he goes through. Um, the bits of grass there. I don't want grass on the riverbed, so I'll go back to paint texture and just paint out that grass. And um, because that grass was originally on top of the mountain, which I leveled down under the floor, so 
That's why it was the. There we go. Ah, in the trees again. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. So, top down view, press G. You can see you have your little lake as usual. Cuts through the mountains into a sort of caved area. And this is where the cave will be. We've got rid of the sharp edges on the inlet, the sharp edges inside the cave. The sharp edges on the roof of the cave don't matter so much because those will be hidden. And so you don't have to spend time now on things that no one will ever see. What's important now is to just double check and triple check, even quadruple check if you want to, that there's no significant texture stretches because it will be noticed. Um, and you really want to spend time making it look as good as it can be. Um, there's no point rushing. Uh, there's no point at all. You just gotta just keep going over things, making it look a little bit better every time. You see, you see that then where the texture kind of jumped. That's it reorganizing itself um, over more polygons. Um, not more polygons, but more ad adaptively over the polygons, and so it doesn't stretch so much. So, I'm happy with that for now. If I bring my player marker here, um, and test game, I'll be able to see what it looks like as a player. Hit test game. Or just click it, you don't have to hit it. And you wait for the level to um, launch. It shouldn't take too long. It's not a big level. Loading sky, preparing veg, initializing physics. Hmm. So, we come down from our hill to the encampment. It looks very nice. To the lake edge. And we see, lo and behold, a cave. Well, and it's not a cave right now, it's more sort of a cleft in the mountains, but it will be a cave when we're finished. We can go into the water and swim through this cleft if we don't drown. Mm -hmm. And out into the pool in the cave and up into the cave and up to the top. Now when there's a roof and some nice lights, this will be a very nice cave. And a very nice part of the game world, which I wasn't expecting to do. Um, hmm. Okay, so I guess next we'll put on a roof and make the cave entrance actually look like a cave entrance. Escape. Now, if we delete that for now, um, and put it actually, and put it back up here. Because if you don't have it, you will spawn in your default location, which I believe is somewhere on the other side of the mountain, or may at this point by now be in a cave or on top of the mountain. It's best to have one in your scene. Um, hmm. So, the dynamic cave entrance. Well, first of all, we're going to need to find some suitable entities. So if I come out to the world a bit, so I can have a see what I'm doing. It's always good to get a nice aerial view of what you're doing. You, get, you keep yourself, um, <laughs> ironically, keep yourself grounded by getting up into the air and seeing everything. You get a nice overview, refresh your idea of where everything is, and just keep your eye on everything in the world. Um, no big task. But we're going to have to find some entities now that can serve as a roof to our cave. Now I know there's a lot of rocks. There's a lot of rocks in the stock media. And that's what we'll be using. So, add a new entity. And we will look under the folders so we'll find a likely looking entity. Uh, cups, boxes, trash bags, no. Where would it be? Where would it be? Buildings. Death Valley. 
Death Valley has rocks. Death no, but Death Valley is a DLC. Okay, we're not using DLC, we're gonna use stock media. Um, so let's have a look in the mega packs. So um scenery. Let's try scenery first. Hang on, no. Mega pack one is also DLC. We just want stock media. So scenery. Okay, good. Um, rocks. We have ten rocks. And that should be enough to form a decent cave. So I'll put one rock down. I'll pop him here. And I'll have a look around because it never hurts to have lots of choice. Um, which is why I personally advocate DLCs. But I'm not going to enforce their use in this tutorial. This tutorial is for everybody, regardless of what's installed. So classics. Ancient Rome. They didn't have rocks in Ancient Rome. Cartoon. No, would be right. Characters. Ooh, zombies. Uh, dungeons. Ooh. Maybe. Maybe to get like some of these somewhere. So it's like an old ruin. Maybe in the forest. I'm not sure. We'll come back to that. Historical. Bookshelves, hedges, no, okay, medieval. Did they have rocks in the medieval times? Yes, but they're all walls. So we'll, um, Metro Theatre. Excellent, excellent resource. Not suitable for this though, but it's still a good resource. Modern day. That's for backgrounds. Modern day two. Mm-hmm. Nature. Yes. This is perfect. Cave section, cave section, cave section, rock section. Right, let's have a rocky entrance. Maybe we could just plant this over the river. Let's have a look at it. Oh, look at you. Okay. I want to look at him in more detail. I'm going to put him there so I can have a better look at him. Yeah, this would be perfect. If I get this over the river mouth, it completely covers the top of the cleft. Yeah, I'll have him. He's good. But that's a good trick as well. If you're not sure about an entity, place it off your map so you can have a look at it. Um, and if you've seen the last video when I placed it in the tent and upset all my tree roots, that would have been avoided by getting into a habit of placing new big things off the map so you can have a look around them. Um, so, I'll take him. I'll leave him. I'll take a new one. And I'll place it. Here, uh, to rotate and uh, place it down with a left click, and I can fan tune with the uh, um, gizmo widget thing. Hmm. So I'll raise it up slightly and I'll move him across slightly. Now what I want to try and get it is a nice entrance without making seams or juts or jags or making strange things like this which doesn't work for me. Um, but actually that's not too bad um, because you can fill this up with more rocks to add seams on things like this. Um, our main intention of course is to have this covered so it looks like it's a cave rather than just a, a cleft in the mountain um, I think I'd like it a bit rotated so if I just go slightly that way and then move it a little bit further along there hmm. yeah I quite like that oh I'm in the tent <laughs> uh, I'm easily amused, really. Um, okay, so we can come through here. When we look back, we see a hideous... Well, it's not hideous, but it's certainly not in textured properly back of the cave mouth. So we'll want to hide that. Now, we could use the cave mouth again here, but that wouldn't really work. I want this to be more rough-hewn, so I'd use rocks to form the rest of the cave at this point 